Tom's going to be going through the quick sprayer unit that we've been using. And uh, he's got a lot of nice little uh, toys and, and uh, elements that are going to make the job site go a, lot, a little bit smoother and easier. He's got a lot of variety in the nozzles and the, and the types of things that we would use on this type of a project. So I'm going to give the floor over to Tom and uh, feel free to ask any questions. And uh, we're here to learn about this quick spray unit. Tom, take it away. All right, what we're looking at here is we have an inch and a half carousel pump with a 10 to 1 gearbox on it. Sitting above it is what we call a UB3. And it's got about a four plus cubic feet working capacity. The legs are adjustable so it can drop down, so it can dump into a wheelbarrow easily or straight onto the floor. You can raise the legs up and dump it right into the carousel pump. Some of the benefits of the carousel pump, you can run it all day dry. Unlike a rotor stator pump or a light pump like that, it'll burn up if you run it dry. You can run this dry all day. You don't need to prime it or any such the matter. Um, so you don't need to run slurry or anything through? The only time you can run a slurry is if you're doing big aggregate. So when you first push the aggregate down there, you don't have a dry pack, right, right. so it doesn't pack. So you just mix like a, uh, a Portland, real loose Portland mix. Put the Portland mix in first to keep the aggregate from segregating. Yeah. Same thing when you go to wash out. You put a pig ball in after your mix. Put, excuse me, put Portland in after your mix and then a pig ball and it'll keep it from segregating right, on the way right. out. That's the only time you'd really use Portland, but that's really just for heavily aggregated material. Yeah. There's a variety of nozzles. I have two in my hand right here. One is the aluminum tip with a rubber orifice. These orifices are interchangeable. You pop them out fairly easily. And there's four different size orifices you can put down inside this hole for different spray patterns. If I can pop it out. Here's the orifice. The second one, and these are called eight air jet nozzles. There's eight air jets inside here. The second kind of head, it's the same body, different head. This is a stainless tip. And it's got a much bigger hole in it for passing larger aggregate or fibers. Or if there's just, you don't need a pretty texture finish, you run with one of those, maximum output. To run this combo, you need at least 120 CFM. You like to see 180 CFM, especially if you're putting a lot of air through the gun. That'll keep everything from stalling. This pump is a really universal pump. The hopper itself has an opening right here, and there's a coupling right here on the end of the pump that allows this pump, this is what we call a converter hopper pump, it allows this pump to go from one inch, inch and a quarter to inch and a half. The only thing you need to change is the material or the, the pumping line and the material lines that go on it. So you can go from waterproofing to fireproofing to doing this kind of mix with an inch and a half. So that's what makes this really universal. If you're doing heavy duty grout work, you drop on a 20 to 1 gearbox and you can do some heavy heavy duty grouts, like epoxy grouts. Huh. Uh, this pump was designed in the 60s because of the uh, reinforced fiber, GFRC market. People are trying to put them through rotor stator pumps and the rotor stator pumps don't like the fibers. So that's where this pump was kind of born. Um, so what else can I tell you about her? And this is, the, is this the same model as? That is this the exact the same model, except I don't think that pump has a converter hopper on it. Right, right. And any pump can be turned into a converter hopper. You just cut the nipple on, weld the thread on. Right. <clears throat> maintenance issues? Maintenance issues? There's pretty much none. Uh, the only wearing part is the hose. Um, and that, I recommend to take the hose out after you're done using it, or if it's going to sit for a month or so. There's three wheels in there, and the hose is always going to be crushed by one of the three wheels. So if it sits in there for any length of time, you're just wearing out your hose, and some yeah, people just leave them. Yeah, some people just leave them in there and just do their thing. Other people like to pull them out. I personally like to see you get it pulled out. Um, put all silicone lubricant on it. No petroleum based lubricant on the hose. I'd lube it up every 40 hours or more. Anytime you take the hose in and out, I'd put silicone on it. 
in this pump right here too, you're set up with an air regulator, so the air comes in through your um, moisture trap and oil. And this is your air regulator, and your gun plugs in right into the back of the pump, so you don't have to use yeah. any additional air lines.